Good morning, you beautiful people. I hope you are having a fantastic Thursday so far. I had to double check and make sure I knew <laughs> what day it was before I shared that. I am so grateful that you are here hopping on per usual for those of us on social media. I'm going to give everybody a couple seconds in case they want to tune in to the live broadcast. But whether you're watching live or you're watching the uh, recording, I would love for you to drop me a message in the comments. And I want to know if you are either engaged and you've started your wedding planning, engaged and you're like done, you just can't wait for the wedding day and it's like right around the corner, or if you are already married and you're just kind of hearing what is new in the wedding planning world, or if you are just at a different point in your life, either single or dating, and you just like to see this lovely face and just soak up some information. So let me know kind of what your relationship status is, I guess. I always like to know what's relevant to the people tuning in, and that kind of helps me create future content. If this is our first time virtually meeting, I'm Kate. I am the owner of Clem Studios, as well as two other photo businesses. And I am one of the lead photographers. Um, oftentimes, you'll see my face on here. Sometimes you might see my studio manager, Krista. We are based out of Green Bay, Wisconsin, and we work with incredibly wonderful people all over the country and the world. We were actually in Jamaica last month for a destination wedding, and we are just tickled that this is our job and our career and that this is what we get to do. So I am so thankful that you are here and that I can share this knowledge with you because I know that budgeting for a wedding, that can be... Uh, an interesting part of the wedding planning process for sure. I am currently engaged myself. My fiance Andy and I are getting married in September. I'm so excited. He is more can we get married at the courthouse route, but marriage is compromised, so we're doing a big traditional wedding like I wanted to. <laughs> um, so we have had the wedding budget questions. Actually, I've done it twice because I was previously engaged. So maybe that gives me double the knowledge and information, but I wanted to share some insights and thoughts with you guys because I know that, you know, the first things that happen when we get engaged are we're celebrating, we're starting the planning. Holy crap, now I need money. <laughs> A lot of times that's what happens. And so having those money conversations are sometimes stressful that can be um, sometimes an interesting conversation to have with other people contributing to the wedding. So I want to share some thoughts and alternative ideas, and they might not all be traditional. I want to kick this off by first saying that I believe that people will always find a way to figure it out when it comes to money if it's something that they truly want. I think barring you know extreme circumstances like you know, health issues, that kind of thing. But if somebody truly wants something, they're going to figure it out. You know, a couple of weeks ago, Andy was talking about how he wanted to get a snowmobile. And currently our main priority is, you know, planning and saving for the wedding. So it was just an interesting conversation to have that come up of, it was very easy for him to think about a way to make the snowmobile happen, but contributing the same amount of money for the wedding didn't necessarily correlate because that's not necessarily something that, he is like is his number one priority, is his number one passion and um, point of contribution right now. So people will always figure out a way to make something happen financially if it's something that they truly want. So just going into the conversation with that thought. The next thing that I want you to think about when you're wedding planning is what are your priorities when it comes to vendors? And I'm not going to dive into this just because we've done a couple of videos on this earlier this year. If you followed along on the journey, um, you kind of know where we're at. But figure out what your priorities are as far as where you want to put more investment when it comes to your vendors, the parts of your day that mean the most to you, if you know the food is really important, or if you just want to have an amazing dress and the rest of it can be you know, open to possibility. Know what your priorities are and then know that Whatever your priorities are, that's where you're probably going to put more of your money. Now, on average, I can share what some of the more costly vendors are, but again, that can be really objective depending on what those priorities are for you. If you're somebody that food is very important, like for us, we love good food. So our caterer is the most expensive um, vendor on our wedding list, but if you're somebody that's 
really, they would love, you know, a fantastic wedding backdrop and they want flowers everywhere. But if it was just a potluck dinner, you'd be fine with that. That's going to look a lot different than, you know, that former person that I mentioned. Traditionally, the vendors where there's going to be um, a higher amount of investment traditionally would be your venue, your caterer, photographer, florist, um, and sometimes your DJ as well. And again, that can all be skewed depending on where you choose to put more of your investment. That's just traditionally where a lot of that money comes from. I know that there are, you know, formulas out there from either the knot or wedding wire on, you should put 34% of your wedding budget towards your venue and that kind of thing. I kind of think that's BS just putting it out there and just saying it because that's if you are creating a traditional wedding experience where there's a ceremony venue, a reception venue, you know, the average wedding cost is $35,000 across the country. Honestly, that's what it is right now. Um, so they're using that formula based on that information, but that's not a fit for everybody. So I'm not going to dive into, you should spend this percentage of your budget on this vendor and this percentage on that, because I just don't think that's a good fit for everyone. And we're not here to shove anybody into a box that they don't fit in. So go with whatever feels really great to you as far as what your priorities are, where you want to put the most of that investment. So the next thing, now that you know what your priorities are when it comes to your wedding day and your planning and roughly what the most costly vendors might be, then the next conversation that I want you to have and think about is where will your money come from? Are both you and your partner going to be paying for it just yourselves? Are you planning on equally contributing to the wedding? Or are there certain vendors that maybe you'll put more money towards and then your fiance will put more money towards something else? Do you have parents that are going to contribute or grandparents or somebody else that has you know gifted you and set aside um, wedding money? Do you have investments that you've saved um, or things like you know your life insurance or a Roth IRA that you're comfortable pulling from? Um, if you don't have any of those things set up like I do, I use Northwestern Mutual and they've been amazing. And because I set up accounts when I was, you know, 22, I've used those without penalty for like a down payment on my home and putting money towards our wedding and that kind of thing. So think about those different creative accounts that you can potentially pull from without um, greatly like negatively impacting your life that you're comfortable pulling from. What places do those funds exist for you currently? So know where your money is going to come from with what you currently have set up and already in place. Next, I want you to look at how long do you have to save? Are you planning on, you know, if you got married or if you got, sorry, engaged today, are you planning on getting married in fall of 2020? Are you thinking fall 2021 or even 2022 sometime? Knowing how long that you have to save, that's going to give you a much different budgeting plan and setup than somebody who's getting married, you know, if it's in six months or if it's in 18 months from now. Because if you know what your priorities are, roughly how much you want to put towards a wedding, it's going to make a big deal of difference if you have six months to allocate and gather those funds for the 18 months. So know how long that you have to save and if you have a little bit more of a cushion built up and more accounts that you can draw from or more people contributing to your wedding, um, you might have a more comfortable planning, budgeting experience if you are doing a shorter uh, engagement period than if somebody has to gather and save more funds over an amount of time, then I would suggest maybe a longer engagement period. So knowing what your priorities are, roughly where to expect to spend a little bit more money on your wedding journey, where your money is going to come from at this current point, and how long you have to save, that can start to help a lot of the big pieces fall in place. Then next, I want you to look at some alternative ideas for you to bring in more money. Because again, like I said, people will always find a way if it's something that they truly care about and they want to put money into, I have had numerous clients where the most important thing to them were their wedding photos because you know I had a, a couple that got married um, in 2018 and 
for the bride, the wedding photos were the most important thing to her because her dad had recently passed away. Her mom and her dad hadn't been together for a long time, but it still meant something to her to have those photos. And she didn't have any photos of them on their wedding day because they just simply didn't have any photos. They had, you know, a couple photos together in a relationship. And she said to herself, I'm not going to have that happen because this means something to me. And this is the most important thing for me is to have this documented, to have my children be able to see these photos of us on our wedding day. So she chose to get a part-time job that solely went towards wedding photography because it meant so much to her. And she knew that this was where she wanted to put her money. That was her choice. So now that we know all of these other pieces, the alternative ideas that I have for bringing in some extra money for the vendors and pieces that you want to make happen, one would be getting a second job or a third job or you know another way to create a revenue stream. If your schedule allows, maybe your fiance grabs another job, something like that. Um, selling unneeded household items, things like maybe that college ping pong table that's sitting in the corner of your basement. We don't have one, I'm just saying it might exist out there. Or maybe there's you know, some pieces in your kitchen that you don't use or things like that. Anything that you can sell either on Facebook Marketplace, maybe a rummage sale, that kind of thing. Things that you can just purge and um, free up some space in your home and maybe make some extra money doing that. Uh, if you have, speaking of extra space, if you have an extra room in your house, you could Airbnb or uh, I don't think you can VRBO. I think VRBO is only whole homes, not just a space in the home. When I owned my house downtown before Andy and I got engaged, I uh, was an Airbnb host. And for most of the time, I was just renting out my spare bedroom. But then when we got engaged and I moved into Andy's home that he also owned, I Airbnb'd the whole house. And that was just such great, um, essentially like passive income. I mean, really, I just had to clean. And actually, oftentimes I paid my mom to clean outsourcing. It's a beautiful thing. Um, so that was great. And I had really great experiences. If you want to know more about that, feel free to ask me about that. Um, but yeah, I loved doing Airbnb. Another alternative idea for bringing in some extra funds would be having a coin shower for your wedding shower or on your wedding registry, registering for cash funds. You know, for Andy and myself, like I said, we both owned homes before we were engaged and together and while we were engaged and together. And so when we came together and combined all of our stuff, we didn't have much that we needed. And when we saw like, okay, we need an extra set of sheets, we just went out and bought the extra set of sheets. We weren't thinking, okay, let's wait a year and a half for our wedding shower. So we're not the kind of people that need items. We are very experience focused. So for our wedding registry, we've registered for like our honeymoon and remodeling our kitchen, date nights, things like that. We have a couple charities on there. Um, so that can be a really great way. I know we're working through, um, our wedding website is Zola. And on there under the cash fund section, you can even register for wedding vendors and that kind of thing. Like I know photographers on there and dress and DJ, I think food might be on there. So there are a lot of different options there. Um, so a coin shower or with your wedding registry, that can be a great way to bring in some extra funds. And if you plan on doing that, just maybe have a conversation with your wedding vendors, letting them know, hey, we've registered for this. We have money that will be coming in after our wedding. Can we push one payment out past our wedding date or something like that? And just see if they'll be flexible with you on that. Um, another option, if you're comfortable, would be taking out a wedding loan or starting a new credit card for your wedding that you just pay off as you go. And especially if it has cash back or rewards points or things like that. I also often recommend putting large wedding investments on a credit card simply in case you have to dispute it. Um, I know as a wedding vendor, uh, it's a lot friendlier on our end for cash or check transactions simply because the way that I have my business set up, I um, absorb the credit card fees. I don't push them back onto my wedding clients. So, you know, that's roughly 3% of every transaction that um, I don't see, like that doesn't go towards my business. But I know that for setting up a wedding payment plan or for my client's protection on their end, that can sometimes be a friendlier option. So in case anything were to happen and come up, 
having that on a credit card can sometimes be you know safer and easier and again or the wedding loan option um, if that's something that you're comfortable with and that can always be a good fit too if you are doing something like the coin shower or the online wedding registry that then you can just pay it back afterwards short loan term that kind of thing tea break one second oh, i made some tivana tea this morning and it is just like tropical heaven in a cup this morning oh so good um another option of course would be having a conversation with your parents and this was an interesting one um, the first time that I was engaged because when I was planning for that wedding, I was just very um, practical and just going from it like a logistical standpoint. So I just asked my parents, like, hey, we are, we're planning our wedding budget. Are you planning on like, contributing? Is that something that you want to do? If not, it's totally cool. I just need to know my numbers. And it was um, for that generation, it was a little bit uncomfortable for me to approach it that way when it was going to be something that was a gift which I see and I totally respect um, and for me the amount and timing of the gift was appreciated no matter when and how it came I just needed to know what to plan for and I think that's um, something that's being recognized in our generation as we plan a wedding now and I think those conversations with parents are getting a little bit more comfortable I know this time around with my wedding for Andy um, my parents knew that I was going to ask that question and so they were prepared ahead of time um, on what to tell me and that kind of thing. So just approaching it with a ton of love because I do recognize that across the generations that might not always be, it might not always come across as um, respectful when in our eyes we're just trying to protect ourselves and plan ahead. So if you feel comfortable having a conversation with your parents on we're planning our wedding journey and this is really going to help us know what vendors we can make a priority, where we need to step back from. Were you thinking on doing some sort of a wedding contribution that you're comfortable sharing with us or should we plan on um, you know, planning the wedding ourselves? Just like let us know where we're at there. So if that's a conversation you can have, then beautiful. I highly recommend it. And then the last one that's an alternative idea would be your wedding party. For us, again, you know, we're not registering for items necessarily. And what I've had some of my couple's wedding parties have done is they've come together and their gift to the couple was, you know, a portion of their wedding photography services. So if you're in the camp of either you don't need a ton of items that you've registered for or you have a vendor that you would love to work with but you just can't necessarily make it happen, enroll your wedding party and let them know like, hey, if you're choosing that you'd like to celebrate us or do a group gift or something like that. We had this idea, I'll just use the example of wedding photography because that's my realm. <laughs> um, we found this wedding photographer that we would love to work with because these memories are gonna last us forever through the generations. It's you know what we're gonna have left after the wedding day besides our friendship with you and then our photos and my relationship with my partner. And if you'd like to contribute towards that, that would be the greatest wedding gift that we could ever ask for. So those are some of the alternative ideas. Again, I didn't dive into what percentages should go where, you know, all those logistics, because I think when you are planning a heart-centered wedding and you have a vision and you're creating something that really aligns with what you're going to be so excited to talk about for the next 5, 10, 50 years, you can't necessarily fit yourself into that you know cookie cutter box of 34 percent of your budget goes towards your venue and then two percent goes towards guest favors and that kind of thing i truly think that it's all up to what feels good for you guys so just to recap first start with what are your priorities when it comes to your wedding day your vendors where do you want to put the most time and the most investment into and just really write those out for yourself next um, and then just also considering what traditionally some of those more costly vendors are, which would be um, venue, caterer, florist, DJ, photographer, traditionally. I mean, again, that's, it's just such a kind of arbitrary term because if, if your photographer isn't important to you, then you can find somebody on, you know, Craigslist for $500, although I'm not going to recommend that because you might not even get your photos necessarily if they don't have a great business practice in place. But if photos are not a priority for you or if you just don't have a photographer at all, 
that portion of this was supposed to be an expensive vendor, that gets to go somewhere else. So I'm just loosely putting that out there. Um, then I'm looking at where will your money come from? Will it be just you and your partner? Will you equally contribute to the wedding? Will one person contribute more than the other? Do you have any accounts currently set up that you're able to comfortably pull from? Whether that's a savings account you've set up for a wedding or a special occasion, or if it's you know an investment or a Roth IRA or life insurance that has cash funds, something like that. Um, any other currently set up uh, accounts and items that you can pull money from that you know that your wedding money will be coming from. Next, looking at how long do you have to save? If you're looking at getting married six months from now, your budget plan is going to be a lot different than somebody who's getting married 18 months or two years from now. And then finally, it's just considering some alternative ideas for bringing in money because again, if it's important to you, people always find a way to make the funds happen. So that could look like getting an extra job, selling unwanted items around the house, um, Airbnb, doing a coin shower or a cash fund on your wedding registry, um, setting up a loan for your wedding that's just got a short, short loan term on it so you can pay it back shortly after your wedding, or setting up a new credit card for your wedding or even using an existing one, especially if it has cash back points, um, you know, certain rewards like that. Asking your parents if they're comfortable contributing or comfortable sharing how much they'd like to contribute with you. And then also enrolling your wedding party in gifting you one of your vendors. If you have items that you just, you simply don't need things and that's how you choose that you want to be celebrated, just share that with them and see if they'd like to uh, put something towards that and really just celebrate you guys that way. So those are the slightly non-traditional tips for budgeting for your wedding. I've also in um, the link above, I think it's below me right now, I'm not sure where it is, there is a link to our budgeting spreadsheet. Um, this is kind of the starting point of where I started my budget spreadsheet. I use the budget spreadsheet. I am a spreadsheet fanatic. Our whole wedding is in a spreadsheet. Our guest list was in a spreadsheet. Um, so this was just the starting point of some areas where I knew that there, there are traditionally wedding investments and just broke it down. Feel free to grab that if that's something that would interest you. Let me know what other areas of wedding planning are somewhat confusing or murky or you just want some more information on because I would be happy to do another live video on those. Feel free to drop that in the comments below. Send me a message from me on Facebook or send me an email. My personal email is kate at clumstudios.com. All right, you guys, you have a fantastic day. We've got some sunshine here in Green Bay, so I'm going to enjoy it in my surround windows, and I will talk to you soon. Have a good day.